shalom everybody and welcome back to the channel and if you're looking to learn how to trade but you have no idea where to start please take the free four hour master course down in the description if you're looking for a programmer to turn your strategy into a forex robot that trades automatically for you feel free to contact me down in the description as well i left my email and contact details and if you're looking to learn how to code yourself then i also teach coding lessons feel free to go down in the description as well now here are the notes for this tutorial loops the if statements right the if and else statements they operate after one tick do you see this void on tick up here what it basically means is that everything that's underneath the void on tick everything that we've been doing will work after every one tick so a tick when you go to your to your trade terminal go to the one minute chart do you see that thing that's moving there that little up and down right there that's called a tick that's what a tick does so that's what the on tick function means it means that this entire thing that we wrote underneath the void on tick will happen again and again after each and every tick until the conditions that we have set become reached so it's always running it each time a tick happens do you see how crazy that is do you see how a human being can't do that so an if statement it it works after every one tick like i said so here on the ema crossover we said that if the ema 50 is above the 20 and just like that just like that it's going to check that every tick so after a tick happens the computer's gonna go like hey is the ema above the 20 yet oh it's not okay it, it waits and then another tick happens hey is is the ema 50 above the 20 yet oh not yet and then it waits for another tick and ticks happen in microseconds so do you see how already the computer is better than you that's how this operates but then the while loop it works not on the tick you can even hear it in the name you know i passed him a drink while i was eating a donut these two events happen at the same time while is something that happens at the same time so if you wanted to execute 10 trades you like open 10 trades but instead of an if function you used a while meaning that right here where i wrote if a ema is above 50 i can easily replace this with while you see it lights up blue what this says is that if the 50 is above the 20 at that exact moment bye 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 it's happening at the same time but then if i keep it at if it's gonna happen after each tick that's the only difference between these two and the for loop it counts that's what it does so i've shown you the for loop before and we use for loops when counting don't worry i'm going to be typing out the formats of these things so you can understand what each and every one of them needs but then just but then i just wanted you to grasp the theory of it of when we're talking about an if statement what do we mean when we're talking about a while statement what do we mean happens at the same time and when we're, we're talking about a for loop what do we mean now there's another one called the else one you know it usually goes with the if statement it's usually called the if else statement so if i'm passing you the donut do this else if I am not passing you the donut, then do that. That's what basically it means. If this, if not, then that. That's what the else does. So I'm going to show you how to use these things in a second, but I just wanted to get you acquainted with what, with, with everything that's happening here. Now, the if statement, I'm sure you don't need to know how that one works because we've been using it. It's just if open brackets, then put in your conditions, whatever it is, that's how it works. And the while loop also works the same way. So if we type while here, you'll see that it lights up green. It lights up blue, but then it didn't light, light up blue here because that's a capital letter. If we replace that with a small letter, you see, it'll light up blue. So if we were to press F1 on the while loop, we can see the different types of ways that we can use this loop. And MQR5 shows us. So as you can see from the examples here, they are basically telling you that this thing can actually work the same way as an if statement. You see here they said while k is below n and 
da 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 is not equal to da 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 it doesn't matter but then you can also put an if statement right there the only difference between the two wherever there's an if statement you can replace it with a while loop the only difference between the two is that while disregards the void on tick while is saying i'm gonna do this now at the same time simultaneous equations you get like simultaneously i'm gonna do this right now but then the if statement will follow the on ticks rules it's gonna wait for the next tick to operate again wait for the next tick to operate again just like that great but then the for loop oh yeah as you can see from that example it was a weird looking thing um that's called that some some traders they use mathematical equations in their trades we've used mathematical equations as well and you as well as you are advancing you will create your own equations it doesn't matter how it looks like to me and you because the user is not going to be seeing the code you get it and then the for loop let's look at how it's written down now the for loop is the one that's most interesting out of this because the while and uh if statement are you know basically understandable and also the else statement so the else the if and the while statement they they they, they don't require any 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 parameters but then the for loop if you do not put your parameters in these formats it will give you an error so you need to put in three things for the for loop to be satisfied and that is your first expression your second your third expression i want you to take this example into consideration okay um they said that for x equal to one and then semicolon that's the first expression the next expression as long as x is below or equal to seven thousand then please add by one so x plus plus here is the only thing that's going to be a little weird for you x plus plus just means add by one increase by one each time so the way that the computer will look at this is is the x whatever the x is equal to one or not if it is then it will move to the next expression and as long as x is not greater than seven thousand okay then keep adding one to that expression keep adding one to that function or to that variable that's what the for loop does do you see that it just counted the array that you gave it x can be anything x can be like a list let me just put this into example so that you understand. I can easily write down saying um, integer, right? Because we're going to be doing a list of integers, just numbers. X is equal to, I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Cool. Do you see? X is... Is, a, is an array it's an array right there and what they did here is that they say x is equal to one okay now the computer is going to check the x you get it it's going to check whatever x is equal to and it's equal to this list to this array here and it's going to check from all of these x numbers here is any of them greater than seven thousand if they are then this expression is now rendered useless because it has broken the rules you get it but then if it is then please keep adding one to x just keep adding one keep adding one that's what the for loop does it just counted it just it's like the computer's eyes it just saw the array and then it started to see if wait a minute does this match with this and then I'm going to add one if it does. I'm not going to add anything if it doesn't. That's what the for loop does. You always use the for loop whenever you want to count a certain array of data. Whenever you want to check and, and, and evaluate a certain list of data. And that's the reason why it's called a loop. You know, it's going to keep looping. It's going to keep counting. It's going to keep... Um, going over that multiple times reading over that multiple times that's what we need in terms of computer this also works perfectly for price this is a, a, a good way to check if price has changed or it's a good way to check if candles have risen or something has or something new has happened or not it's a great way to fulfill that and then we're going to be doing more examples with the for loop as we go on i just wanted to give you the theory behind it 
Stick with me to the next listen and shalom.